Frank and John Craighead hunt dangerous game in America. They track the grizzly, not thrills, but for knowledge. time, that all the air was clean and all the waters pure. Each living thing fit neatly into an exquisite order, a system in which death was part of life, and there was space and life for all. years. It all be gone within the next 30,000 days. For one creature, man, now claims all the land and the right to change its ecology, the relation between living organisms and their environment. Man has wiped out a hundred species and today endangers a thousand more. Even the grizzly bear, Lord of the Wilderness faces extinction. A contemporary of the Mastodon and saber-toothed tiger, the grizzly has roamed North America for a million years. But in just a century and a half, two human lifespans, he has been nearly exterminated. Less than a thousand remain in the United States outside Alaska. A formidable beast, the grizzly. As strong as an ox, fast as a horse, quick as a cat. No animal but man can challenge him. None but man can save him. Today, a secluded laboratory in Yellowstone National Park houses the first major scientific study of the grizzly. For more than eight years, a research team led by doctors Frank and John Craighead, using techniques and insights of modern science, has culled truth from legend in an effort to save the great bear. To capture a grizzly for intimate study, the researchers have baited a trap with meat and set the trigger that will release the trap door. Craigheads began, there were no set dosages for drugging a grizzly. It had never been done before. Too heavy a dose could endanger the bear. Too little endangers the researchers. Okay, she's got her head this way. Similar to Corari, it relaxes the animal by blocking nerve transmission to the skeletal muscles. It is quickly eliminated and has no lasting effects. When the bear is immobilized, John prepares an anesthetic that will keep the grizzly manageable for several hours. The student carefully records the dosage and the animal's reaction. She's ready. Let's get her now. 
Because so little is known about the grizzly, nearly everything they learn will be a first. Even such basic questions as how many grizzlies are there? How rapidly do they grow and mature? How long do they live? All right, now try it. 450. 425 for a net. 425. Okay. Wait. With scientific precision, they gather the vital statistics of a living, free population. Next, 31. Nose to eye, six and a half. Hold her head up just a little bit there. Yeah. Make a hole first. Each bear gets a number and a brightly colored ear tag to make possible a census of the grizzly population and to enable the research team to keep track of individual bears. G62. Color-coded plastic markers allow positive identification at a distance. Over 200 grizzlies have been marked and observed from year to year. Analysis of milk samples sent to other scientists will supply clues to the grizzly's body chemistry and reveal relationships with other species. Grizzlies are obese animals. Blood samples taken from dozens reveal high cholesterol and low thyroid levels. This condition in humans indicates hardening of the arteries, but grizzlies do not suffer from this disease. Why? As the Craigheads and their colleagues work on this scientific puzzle, they may provide better understanding of the disease in man. Now if you can grab his tongue. Although old grizzlies, like old people, tend to have bad teeth, the plaster cast has no connection with dental hygiene. It is instead a way to determine age by measuring tooth growth and wear. Right there. I'm holding it here. I think it's a good set, then. Yeah, it's a good set. It feels When research requires a specific type of grizzly or the recapture of a known animal, the Craigheads cannot take potluck with a trap. Instead, they stalk an animal or stake out in their cars and wait for the desired bear to come within range of a gun that fires a drug-filled dart. Today, they seek a cub, but face the problem of its mother. Will she try to protect a fallen cub, or will she run off with the other one? No one knows. Yeah. Harry, the cup head of the screen, give me a hand. And, uh, Jerry, take the gun. Right. Cover John. The sound's right here. The fast acting drug takes effect just as the cub crosses a stream. Within seconds, the young bear might drown. Its mother might charge. Although still within striking range, the female does not charge. Another example of unpredictable grizzly behavior. The cub is placed in a trap for safekeeping. Later, he will be weighed, measured, tagged, and returned to his mother. Another recognizable individual in the growing census of grizzlies. High-powered weapons are a precaution. The Craigheads have never had to use them. There have been several narrow escapes. For each grizzly is a potential threat and may react to capture and drugging in unexpected ways. This is number 36. As work continues on number 36, John Craighead sees that the bear appears to be shaking off the effects of the drug. He must keep close watch on its breathing and eye movements for signs of premature recovery. Well, uh, let's, uh, let's get a hands to the paw now. The team prepares to make a plaster cast of the grizzly's paw. Its size is another indication of age. Uncertain of how the bear is reacting to the drug, John wonders whether to risk another injection. Too much might be harmful. Concerned as much for the bear's safety as his own, John decides against another dose. 
the team will have to complete the work as quickly as possible. No one can predict what might happen when the powerful 500-pound male regains use of his limbs. We ought to put the air tag in. Breathing faster, I'm better at watching that. Now the drug is quickly losing its effect. Number 36 will not hold still much longer, and John cancels other planned experiments. There is time only to complete the impression and perhaps place a tag in the grizzly's ear. Amid the sagebrush meadows and pine forests of Yellowstone National Park, the Craighead team spends eight years chipping away at the myths surrounding the grizzly bear. A lonely prowler in legend, the grizzly, in fact, is a social animal. Females often adopt stray or orphaned cubs and raise them as their own. The male takes no part in raising young. The cubs are lovable, mischievous, playful, and always hungry. A mother grizzly is protective, doting, even tender. may comprise two or three cubs. An only child is not uncommon. Quadruplets are rare. Toothless and hairless, the cubs weigh about 18 ounces at birth, but grow to 100 pounds or more in a year. Most females will nurse their young for a full year, some for two. The female will not accept a mate until she has weaned her young. She must at times protect her brood from attack by a vicious male. Each grizzly troop has a dominant male who may weigh half a ton. Even other adult males get out of the way when the boss comes around. Status, dominance for its own sake, not territory, seems to be the basis for the grizzly's hierarchy. A female with cubs is high in the social order. When approached by an aggressive male, the cubs scatter, while their mother stands, ready to fight if need be to protect her family.
doctors John and Frank Craighead find the early years of their unprecedented study of the grizzly both fruitful and frustrating. Although they have collected valuable biological data, their observations of behavior have been limited to chance encounters and distant views through high-powered lenses. How, they ask, can we consistently locate, follow, and get close to a free-roaming grizzly, a fierce, unpredictable animal that is most active at night and sleeps much of the day in dense, timbered retreats? Their answer is electronics. We could use a transmitter similar to this one here, and uh, it would have the transmitter attached to the collar, to the brass strap collar. Now several layers of fiberglass, vinyls, and resins will make the device waterproof, shockproof, and, they hope, bearproof. Let's uh, check the on-off period. The first to be instrumented, Grizzly number 40, will become a Craighead favorite, one of the few they have named. They call her Marion. Each collar is brightly and individually colored for easy identification. Portable tracking receivers convert the radio signals into audible beeps. Each bear is clearly identified by the number of beeps per minute. Signals from the two-ounce transmitter can be picked up 20 miles away. Radio signals from instrumented free-roaming grizzlies flow into the antenna atop the Craighead's Yellowstone lab. Skillful interpretation of the split-second pulses reveals the bear's location and movements. The accumulating data give the brothers new insight and perspectives. Before radio tracking, they felt they were observing the grizzlies through a keyhole. Now they have a wide-screen panoramic view. For the first time, man learns precisely how much land a grizzly needs. The average for a single bear in Yellowstone, 20 square miles. Season after season, Frank and John Craighead track number 40, Marion, and other radio-equipped grizzlies trying to learn the secrets of the bear's deep winter sleep. It is not hibernation, which is like a coma accompanied by a sharp drop in body temperature. Bears do not hibernate. In late summer and early fall, the grizzly digs his den, often miles away from his normal summer range. Then he returns to his summer haunts until some mysterious biological mechanism tells him it is time to go to sleep for half a year. When the first snow falls and temperature drops, the bears go to their dens, but do not remain inside. The storm has triggered an urge to den, but should the air warm and snow melt, they come out. They will not begin their long sleep until the big snowstorm that freezes Yellowstone for the winter. For the first time, man has tracked a grizzly to its winter home. While the others stand guard, Frank inspects Marion's den. She has dug her den beneath the roots of a big tree. Like most grizzly dens, it faces north, perhaps to assure a deep insulating blanket of snow. The interior is lined with evergreen boughs. Cubs are born during the period of deep sleep. Other inspections will reveal that pregnant females line their dens with grass and moss, providing a soft bed for the helpless infants. Weeks later, after a prolonged warm spell, heavy snows cover the Rockies. Marion again heads for her den. This time, all the grizzlies will begin their long winter sleep. The bears enter their dens before or during a snowfall when no footprints will reveal their location. The severity of the storm forces the Craigheads to leave Yellowstone for the winter. Their dream of taking biological measurements of a bear during winter sleep must wait another year. For those who ask, why bother? What good is a grizzly anyway? The Craigheads recall the same question being asked of John's daughter, Karen, when she was 12. We want to save the grizzly, she said, 
Because when he's gone, he's gone forever. And we can't make another one. All creatures, including man, exhibit some common behavior traits deeply rooted in animal instincts and animal drives. So as we strive to know ourselves and to understand our own behavior, we find there is much we can learn by studying other animal life, whether it be mice or grizzly bears.